What's up YouTube? Welcome back. I'm Trucker Jim. This isn't the trucking journey, but brother, it is still a journey. I am coming to you from Taylor, South Carolina at the Rainbow RV Park. And that noise that you hear is my generator. And the reason I'm having to use a generator, well just to let you know when I'm recording this, this is the day after Hurricane Helene. Well, it came through Florida, Georgia, South Carolina. I don't know where all it went after here, but it was rough here at the Rainbow RV Park. That's my power pole leaning over on my neighbor's shed. That's my neighbor. I'll tell you more about that guy in a minute. But we have some trees down. That's one of the reasons we have no power. And this particular tree here, guys, came so close. I don't know how it didn't that the death rate for this hurricane went up by five more because of this tree right here. Well, you see what it did to this camper. Luckily, she was staying with her kids and was not present during this. And then it fell on the tiny house. Luckily, there was no one in there at the time. But the reason this tree, whoo, man, it really could have killed at least four, maybe five of us. But the reason we were there was because of this first tree that fell from the backyard of here across the fence onto this camp. Unfortunately, this fellow was home. This belongs to an old man named John Emery. He's a little sweet old man. He don't drive anymore because he's always riding the bus. How I became involved in this is, I don't know, eight o'clock that morning during the storm, I hear a knock at my door and it was my neighbor, Jason, telling me that this tree had fell on old man John's camper and he was trapped. And there was a you know tropical storm, seriously, going through at the time. I won't build up all the tension about the tree that fell on us while we were trying to help him, but uh, yeah, that tree. Now there was four of us trying to help him. I was standing at this window talking to him, only seeing his hand and his flashlight because the ceiling was already caved in on the other side of that. And then this tree fell. Yeah, this same tree I showed you at the beginning is fallen tree number two. And there was four of us standing around that camper trying to help the old man when that fell. I don't know how many people believe in miracles, but how that didn't kill or severely injure all five of us that was in there. The mathematical odds of that. Well, I'm not sure what that number is. Somehow, between all those trees and down power lines, we were all able to crawl out. Well, except for old man John. He wasn't going nowhere. He was pinned down with a camper ceiling and two trees on top of him. So. He was very in a very vulnerable situation. Now after the tree fell, that was kind of it for me. I probably don't need to be doing that. And also at that same time, the fire department had showed up. And there was like seven or eight of them with their hard hats and everything on. And they started dealing with that. And Chase came out with a bloody nose, a scratch on his face, complaining about his chest. He could barely breathe because he got hit, I guess, pretty good by a limb that came down. And it's pouring down rain and torrential wind blowing at the time so i went back to my camp which is not very far at all from where those trees came down but while we were in the camper chase and i the fire department determined that that was too dangerous and they weren't gonna fuck with it are you crazy there's four big trees down just on this street alone that the one that got us is you know the closest one but with the combination of that the saturation the potential for more fallen trees and their electrical lines they deemed it's too dangerous and like, we're not doing this which some of you may say hey that's shitty they're supposed to be heroes that's their job but they're supposed to come home too so you know i can't really say i blame them too much but my neighbor over here he went and got his chainsaw and cut a hole in the side of that trailer after all that pulled john out and took him to the paramedics and they've taken him to the hospital yeah but that's pretty badass i don't care who you are and a shout out to lucas maintenance here in taylor's people he can help with a lot of things 
uh, all your pressure washing, whether it's roof, house, concrete, but he works with fences, repair, decks, all kind of stuff. Very talented, badass fellow. I don't have any updates on old man John. So that's my storm story. I would love to hear you guys. I know everybody in the southeast, it seems like, or in South Carolina doesn't have power. I'm not sure about Georgia and Florida, but it was a bad storm, for sure. No doubt. But it could have been a lot worse. Let me show you where I was standing. I was standing just on the other side of this limb that punctured the camper beside the window. I was talking to John. Well, actually, I was holding a girl that was laid across talking to John when all of this came tumbling down a tree even bigger than the original tree which that's the original tree it's the one under and then this big one fell on top we were right here the other two guys were on the other side of the camp somehow some way no bones were broken no lives were lost. Glory to God. I don't have any details of what I'm going to be doing uh, next week and probably the rest of the year, but I bet it's going to be something to do with claim adjusting, property adjusting. Hopefully, I would like to do it right here in my backyard in upstate South Carolina and, and help my own community. But <laughs> adjusters are going to be needed in Florida, Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina. Probably Tennessee too. And then not to mention all the flooding that's happened or that will be happening as things flow down. It's a mess. I don't know how long we're gonna be without power. I'm uh, trying to talk Chase into getting up and riding, in, riding around with me, find a gas station that's open with gas so we can fill our gas cans up for the generator. Maybe uh, pick up some food. But with the generator, you know, we're in business. We don't have internet, but everything else, uh, we can do a lot. We just don't have our Wi-Fi, but we do have our, uh, you know, phones and iPads and all that stuff. And cell service has been, been fine, but there's no power. Thankful, man, I could have very easily been burying my son one day next week because he was crushed by a tree. So close. So close. Or he could have been burying me, or my mom could have been burying us both. I know the older I get, the more I value being prepared. But everyone, have a great day, if you can. Most of you, I don't know when you're watching this. If you don't have power to charge your phone, it's probably not today. But I know I'm not truck driving anymore and putting it on this channel, most of my audience was truck drivers, but that is how we're all gonna come out of this, is the truck drivers. Once the guys with chainsaws get all the roads clear, and then once the crews with the power trucks start getting the power lines up, well, simultaneously while all that's happening, truckers are gonna be getting goods from one place to another, keeping the supply line running. <laughs> America couldn't be America without them. So juice to the truckers. Thank you for your sacrifice and all you do. I'm not planning to get out there with you. I'm gonna, I'm gonna provide a service in a different way. But if you're ever wondering, what should I do? That's the question to ask. Well, what does the world need? What would be of service? How can my natural talents benefit the masses? But everyone, have a good one. I'll see you in the next one. But until then, be safe out there and keep on trucking. Everybody going through a little